So about five days ago, Skyrim Special Edition got an update on PC, PS4, and Xbox One. Typically, I post these update videos right as that happened, but honestly, I wasn't initially intending to cover it. A couple of days had passed, and I was like, yeah, whatever. If you're on consoles, you probably downloaded something worth 1.5 gigabytes in size, and on PC, it was some other size. But something very interesting that came with this update is, well, the biggest and most expensive thing we've had thus far in Creation Club, not including any of the bundles. And that really is the gist of this update if you're curious. You get a few new things from Creation Club, Skyrim Special Edition, Script Extender broke but it was fixed, and some of your mods that were dependent on that may need an update themselves. So this new creation known as the Forgotten Seasons DLC is going to run you about 1200 credits, which translates to roughly $12, although the smallest pack you can buy to actually afford this is going to be $15, so without a doubt you're at least $15 down the drain unless you already had points on your account. There honestly hasn't been a ton of coverage around this, and I was pretty curious, what does my $12 get me? The last batch of releases for Fallout 4 was probably the best batch we've had thus far, so I wanted to see what were they doing on the Skyrim side. Is Skyrim's new $12 mini DLC actually worth $12? Is it worth re-downloading the game for and adding some points to your account? So I bought it, I took one for the team and decided to check it out. Before I did that though, there was actually one other new release in this that was getting a lot of pretty good reviews, so I wanted to try it out first, and it added in a new weapon and armor, so it was fitting to get the new content before doing the other new content. So the Civil War Champion set was 600 points, and it's actually kinda cool. That's roughly going to translate to $6, so it's definitely a little pricey. But basically, depending on which faction you did side with, you're going to participate in a duel between the Stormcloaks and the Imperials. It's a pretty cool little grudge match, and in the end, you will get two sets of armor, as well as two weapons to go along with it. Each of these are extremely high quality, and actually looks really freaking cool. You're gonna see me using this throughout the rest of this video, so I figured I'd give it a shout out at the beginning because I know there would be hundreds of comments asking me what this is and where I got it. Again, at $6, it's a little steep, but it's definitely not our total ripoff. But moving on, we do have Skyrim's new $12 mini DLC, Forgotten Seasons, something that's been teased for months upon months at this point. Starting off the quest, it actually takes you to a totally new location in the game, although a fairly minor one. It's just going to be another cavern like all the other caverns, dungeons, and caves you've explored already. But immediately, you're introduced to something pretty interesting about this. There's side quests associated with this main quest. There's actually two side quests in total, both of them being fairly minor, just finding various things along your journey through this dungeon, one of them leading to you getting various masks, the other one leading to you getting a pretty cool Dwemer horse. We'll tie back around into that in a moment. So at its core, this mini DLC is meant to be a puzzle dungeon. It's meant to entice you with the different things you have to find and uncover, and not really the story or lore behind it. So if you're looking for something that's going to give you $12 worth of content in the lore department, this is not that. It does have somewhat of a story, there's like four or five notes you could find throughout the entire thing that detail why some of the mercenaries are there, what they were looking for, things like that. But the main role here is to go through and explore and actually take down some of those enemies, unlock some of those bridges, and progress through the entire thing. At first it seems fairly basic and like a lot of the other dwarven dungeons you've probably seen through free mods or even just the game itself, but once you make your way into the second section of this after the little prequel bit, you'll realize why this is called Forgotten Seasons. You're going to see some very intense weathers on the indoor of this, which the first time you see it are pretty jarring, it definitely has a powerful vibe to it, as well as as you approach this big staircase, you see a big spider go behind a big door. Pretty obvious that that's going to be the end of this. You are going to get those stairs up and then actually make your way through that door. And now you'll kind of see the gist of this dungeon. There's going to be a summer, a winter, a spring, and a fall door door that you can go through, each of those having their own little dungeons within them, and each of them kind of having a theme around them, the four different seasons, and after you complete all of those, you do drop down the staircase and fight the final boss. So bulk of your time is going to be spent in each of these four seasonal dungeons, and they're fairly cool. Most of them will have a variety of different foes, and the actual scenery itself is geared around that season. For the summer one, you were directing this little spider around, big lava pits. In the autumn one, you had to collect different plants, and it seems like that one really embraced the theme the most, but honestly the spring and winter one were a little bit odd because even though those other two had pretty cool themes and kind of unique gameplay mechanics, these two you literally just kind of ran through. There were some enemies you had to take down along the way, but the whole thing was just a process of walking from one end to the other end in a winter or spring themed region. There was no unique gameplay thing or no real puzzle for you to complete. And this is a puzzle in a sense because a lot of times throughout this there simply aren't quest markers. You're going to actually have to figure out where you have to go next. That's the kind of thing that 
that appeals to you, then good, but sometimes for me it became kind of frustrating. In the autumn one in particular, you have to find all the various plant types, then actually put them in their corresponding repositories. Finding the plants was fairly obvious, but finding the repositories was nigh impossible for me. I actually gave up and watched somebody else play through the dungeon, and even them spent like 20 to 30 minutes walking around the dungeon trying to figure out where their repositories are. It turns out they're right next to the door. I don't think they're intended to be part of the puzzle, they just kind of blend into the background when you walk in. And that was kind of the gist of it. Along the way, you may find some of those masks. They're again not handed to you, so if you don't find them, you'll have to go back through and redo it. Same thing goes for the horse parts, you just have to stumble upon them along the way, and if you don't, then you're gonna have to go through and look for them again. In the end, the final battle with the spider boss is pretty cool. He has a bunch of different elemental things pertinent to all the different seasons you just encountered. And then after that, you're kind of done. You could leave, I guess you technically could go through it a second time, but I don't think it'll reset the quest. In its totality, the dungeon probably took me two to three hours, although again, like a decent chunk of that was spent just looking for those repositories. The horse you get from this is actually really freaking cool. Even some of the masks and armor you get from it also look particularly cool, although you can definitely tell the armor is reusing assets while the mask is fresh assets. It just looks much higher quality. And all in all, it was okay. But as far as the worth of a $12 DLC to Skyrim, no way would I pay $12 for this. It gave me a couple hours of additional gameplay, but the replayability just wasn't there. I couldn't see myself wanting to go through this puzzle again. And although the puzzle does have some really cool aspects, especially some of the weather, some of the puzzles themselves were quite cool. I wouldn't say it's the most fun puzzle dungeon I've ever done. But again, I tried to stay pretty objective with this. I know some people will like puzzle dungeons much more than me. So if you're that type of person, this may be worth it. Hopefully this video and what I'm showing you in the background will help you make that decision. But even outside of just this puzzle dungeon and the armors I showed you in the beginning, there are several other things included with this new batch of Creation Club releases. You get some new elite crossbows, one of them being Ebony and the other one being Elven. There's the Vigil Enforcer armor set. A lot of people really like this one also, really talking highly of all of the armors added in with this batch. And then some more content from some of the older Elder Scrolls games that with Sunder and Wraithguard. Each of these looking particularly cool and having their own unique effect in the game, similar to a lot of the other stuff we've seen in Creation Club. So I bought those, but I didn't have time to cover them because, hey, it's the middle of finals week, cut me some slack. Plus, frankly, for those, I feel like the pictures really speak for themselves. They show you exactly what you're getting. But one I did actually want to try out was the Satularia, and I'm pronouncing that wrong, but that's okay, holiday pack, which adds in some Christmas themed stuff or semi-Christmas themed stuff. This one's relatively inexpensive compared to a lot of the other ones at 300 points, but the smallest bundle you can buy is $8, so at minimum you're spending $8 to get access to this, although you can buy some of the other things. And in effect, the entire thing adds in this outfit that is obviously holiday themed. You look like a pseudo elf Santa mix in Skyrim. I hope that was a good description, but also a reindeer, and I actually think the reindeer is pretty cool. That's the whole thing. I mean, you just buy it off this one guy. There's not really any more content outside of what you're seeing right now. But hey, having a reindeer is pretty cool. And let's say you didn't want to put down the $12 for that Dwemer horse. This is a pretty good alternative. So I was pretty curious about the future of Creation Club. As I showed you guys in my Fallout 4 update video, it is continuing for Fallout 4. There's some new things in the fallout4.ccc file. But Skyrim, I'm really curious about. It obviously has a lower player count. It's a much older game than Fallout 4. But it looks like the answer to that is going to be a yes. Yes, at least for now. In here we have a new entry for hollow.esl. This will likely be a house mod of some kind because it's actually by Eleonora, although it definitely could not be. She's made a lot of mods, not just house mods, and actually something else interesting, it's a .esl file. If you don't know, .esl files can hold less forms than .esm files, so just think of it as ESM files are typically larger mods. It might just be how many different objects are added in from that mod though. But either way, yeah, Fallout 4 and Skyrim Special Editions Creation Club is living on into the future. Yeah, that's pretty much going to wrap it up as far as Skyrim content goes. But before we end things off, I do want to share today's psychology fun fact of the day. And it's going to be kind of a special one. I am going to repeat it somewhat from some of the other ones, but it's going to be finals week pertinent. I'm in the middle of studying for finals. I actually have two tests tomorrow, so give me some breaks on this video if it's not edited the best. And I'm sure many of you guys also have some tests up and coming. So first and foremost, something I say almost every time I share these, a good way to remember things, especially like those particularly tricky things that you really struggle with, is to explain it to somebody
somebody else. And this doesn't have to be genuine. You don't have to find someone else. You can just artificially explain it, like talk to a wall or something, like what I'm doing right now, basically. And to go along with that, another technique that I found that really is helpful is almost you put it in the question form. Like if you're studying for a multiple choice test, say to yourself what kind of question you think it would be and then what the answer would be, probably whatever you just studied. But even beyond that, another thing I've talked about, but it might come in handy for some of you right now, the testing effect. One of the best ways to retain information is to test yourself on it, whether that be through flashcards, through not looking at your paper and trying to recall it, and then after the fact, maybe looking at your paper. Flashcards tend to be more effective than that, but just all in all, if you're just reading the same thing over and over again and not actually testing yourself on it, like not looking away and trying to recall it without reading it over, you're not probably studying in the most optimal or efficient way. Like even when I am just reading things off a piece of paper, a lot of times I'll turn away and say the thing to myself and see if I could actually explain it to myself, if I could try and figure out the fundamentals of it and answer it as if it's a question. And if I struggle, I go back and repeat the process until I feel like I've gotten it. So this is kind of a hybrid of actual psychology things and what I do personally, but most of what I do personally now is based off what I learned in classes. Either way, it's pretty much going to wrap it up for this one. As always, again, I thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you all next time. And good luck on finals.